Now, I am running for president certainly because we know that the Democrats and Republicans behind closed doors are one and the same, united, except we had something a little bit come along, a little bit different than the Bushes and the Clintons who vacation together and who are united, CIA linked. And now, as you saw, some of you aware of the MENA, the MENA connection, some of you seen that documentary series, or that documentary, we had a CBS cameraman murdered for helping to bring to light the Clinton governorship in league with the Bush-run CIA, drug-running narcotics into Arkansas as the main hub for all narcotics coming into the USA. So we got a Bush and a Clinton pretending to be different, posing each other, but they're one in the same. That's right. And I make no bones about them to it. It's about time all these things come out and be shown as they are. But now, we got this Mr. Trump. He's out there boasting, talking about NAFTA. I stopped it. I ended it. It was a disaster known as NAFTA. I killed NAFTA. Nobody thought it could be done. You know, you had to get it killed through Congress. You helped a lot, Mr. Congressman. It was the worst trade deal ever made. He eradicated NAFTA. He threw it on the rocks. Now, David Rockefeller, I, David Rockefeller, I have David Rockefeller as one of my great, great, great mentors, along with Class Rob, and I do admire David Rockefeller. He has worked hard, and he has worked diligent for a decade and decade in and decade out, and he has brought forth to this world a whole mechanism, a new world order, as George Herbert Walker Bush did proclaim it back in 1991, 1990. It's time for a new world order. Indeed, people gave some pushback and were alarmed at those terms, and now we got Mr. Trump, who went against NAFTA and GATT. Then he ran for president, got in, overcame the bias of the voting machines. We had that all set up for Hillary Clinton to get in there, move forward our agenda. And then Mr. Trump comes along, and he torpedoes this bureau. He torpedoes the New World Order. He torpedoes the NAFTA and the GATT, the things that the Rockefeller has been pushing for all these many years. Now, David Rockefeller, in his own memoir, his own autobiography entitled Memoir, you know, on page four or five says that he does, in fact, he has a conspired against the best interests of these United States and that he is part of a, quote, secret cabal, unquote, organized working to bring about these agendas. Now, when David Rockefeller in his own book tells it like it is, I am not going to make any bones about telling you all that, indeed, David Rockefeller has been part of a secret cabal. And so am I. I am oath bound. And we in this bureau at the top echelons are absolutely in concert, in unison. We are united, and we will not play around with these kinds of games and these kinds of shenanigans with a Mr. Trump coming along, another billionaire like Mr. Musk, that's trying to un reroute and destabilize this new world order, this great reset. Now, Mr. Trump, he was a lone wolf back in 1994, very many. We had Miss Phyllis Schlafly of the Eagle Forum. She was screaming her head off at the time against the NAFTA and the GATT, saying that all the all the things were going to be offloaded, that all the manufacturing in America was going to be shipped abroad, and all the industrial base and might of the United States would be put into the hands of her enemies, namely China. Well, la dee da no duh. But the Democrats and the Republicans, they all went in league. The Bush and the Gores, the Al Gore and the Clintons, they all out shielding for it. Most of the Republicans pushed for it. The entire delegation out of Utah, all the Utah delegation, voted for NAFTA and GATT. Can you imagine? Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton and Al Gore, president and vice president, Democrats, pushing this world, new world order, trade, fair trade it was called. And even places like Utah, we got them all voting for it, minus one stubborn little new congressman by the name of Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook had the entire GOP establishment of Utah come out and tell him that if he voted against NAFTA and GATT, they were then sure that he would be a one-time congressman. And they and we of this bureau did deliver on that promise. We demeaned and we demolished that man, and he was not re-elected to the House of Representatives. He was a one-time congressman, not to be in there further, to thwart and go against what the Democrats and the Republicans united, establishment Democrats and Republicans, united was standing for, and that was NAFTA and GATT. Now, they, we pushed the free trade. Oh, yeah, it was free trade. Well, of course, Ms. Schlafly and others knew it wasn't about free trade. It was about mass-manufactured control over all nations. We even had Henry Kissinger as a book footnote in The Creature from Jekyll Island that Mr. G. Edward Griffin did author. He even cited in the Los Angeles Times, 1993, Henry Kissinger admits an Afton Gat had nothing hardly to do with trade in the trade anyway. It wasn't trade to put in the framework for a global government. That's right, that's Henry Kissinger. Footnote, an op-ed in the Los Angeles Times. And the dummies, oh, the dummies. Back there, I'm gonna play a little quote, play a little clip right here. Dick Cheney and David Rockefeller, two who I am oath bound with and who I support and champion. Tell it like it is, broadcast on the P-SPAN.
A special televised meeting of the New York-based Council on Foreign Relations provides a window to the real story. The speaker, Vice President Dick Cheney, takes a question from David Rockefeller. Vice President, uh, I just enjoyed so much your whole speech, but I was particularly pleased that you gave such a strong endorsement for the free trade agreement for all the Americans. Subject that has been of great concern to me for many years, and particularly recently, and I think it's absolutely essential for the strength of our economy. Rockefeller's role in the drive for an FTAA was a lot more central than he portrays. Rockefeller cultivated Latin American leaders who could be counted on to support such a proposal. Both the 1994 Miami summit and the FTAA proposal were conceived and nurtured by a Rockefeller-created network. Prominent among the organizations sponsoring the Miami event were the Council of the Americas, founder and honorary chairman, David Rockefeller, the Americas Society, chairman, David Rockefeller, the Forum of the Americas, founder, David Rockefeller, the Institute for International Economics, financial backer and board member, David Rockefeller, the Trilateral Commission, founder and honorary chairman, David Rockefeller, Rockefeller's influence also extends to the current administration. He was Chairman Emeritus of the CFR when Vice President Dick Cheney once served as a director, a relationship that Cheney concealed during his congressional career. It's good to be back at the Council on Foreign Relations. As uh, Pete mentioned, I've been a member for a long time and was actually a director for some period of time. I never mentioned that when I was campaigning for re-election back home in Wyoming. <laughs> And only dummies can't understand it. So there you have it. Dummies back in Wyoming voting for another conservative Republican. Ha! <laughs> we love those dummy dummy voters. Yeah, watch your Fox News. Watch your CNN. Read your New York Times. Or your local rubber stamped bunch of bull crap hooey bull. We got it all. We got it. We got all that media. They march to our drums. They're editors in chief. They are oath bound and part of this secret cabal of which David Rockefeller did boast in his own autobiography of being part of. It exists, and I am proud of it. Only dummies can't see it. Now I'm running. I am running for the political office to become president of the United States. To ensure that Mr. Robert Fitzgerald, oh, well, let's see now, RFK, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Don't want to give him any ideas that he's going to get into this office of the White House. And certainly Mr. Trump. We are not going to buy Mr. Trump trying to make himself someone that's going to get himself into the office of the president. Now, the snapping gat, it has done great damage, as we intended it to do. And we have one example. And Mr. G. Edward Griffin, in his book, did put this in and give some enlightenment for those of you that care to read here and there. And I'm not against reading. I think it's up for a little bit of a challenge for some of you to read and grasp how stupid you are when you go to your voting booth, voting for establishment Democrats and Republicans. Dick Cheney, David Rockefeller, they laugh, they laugh, they laugh at you. The Council on Foreign Relations, they laugh at you. You are dummies who vote for the establishment candidates. And you always do. You always get back to vote for the lesser two evils. And, oh, good little Dick Cheney. Oh, he's a conservative Christian from Wyoming. Well, we better vote for Mr. Cheney. Ha! Huh. Mr. Cheney, rightfully so, laughs at you dummies back in Wyoming. Not aware of him being the director of the Council on Foreign Relations. Anyway, I will not abide, Mr. Trump, derailing more of this World Economic Forum and this New World Order. I am upset, and I am going to come out. I am putting myself out there to win this 2024 election to ensure that uh, Mr. Kennedy nor Mr. Trump are anywhere near the White House nor the reins of power. And, of course, I, with this bureau, have control, along with the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, and the CIA, our sister agency bureau, we got control of the voting machines, and we will ensure that I am your next president, and we will reinstitute NAFTA and GATT, different trading coalitions. Now, I just want to say that Mr. G. Edward Griffin did point out some of what these trade policies do. Yes, with NAFTA and GATT passed, unelected international bureaus and unelected bureaucrats, we, of this secret cabal, we did orchestrate humongous amounts of corn dumped onto the, Ameri the Mexican Marker. When all that corn went down there, it left massive damage. Thousands and thousands and thousands of Mexican farmers went bankrupt because of the American corn, GMO, dumped into their Mexican market. They couldn't compete against it, and they went bankrupt. We orchestrated their going bankrupt. Poor farmers, yes, but self-reliant, land-owning farmers, we wiped them all out. 
With that power of trade, we could go in and wipe away an entire whole swath of farmers, wipe them out, and then they'd be in desperation, have to try to come into the United States to try to get some kind of food, some kind of work. We can manipulate, we can do all sorts of things, but dummies say, oh, free trade, oh, it's free trade. Well, you are dumb. You are dumb, dumb, dumb. How many of you bought that down? How many of you, for example, back in Utah, voted for your establishment GOP people? Even there was a Democrat or two, maybe, might have been in that. They all voted in unison for the David Rockefeller way to go. Now, you dummies, I just laugh and laugh and laugh at you dummies. So, vote for me or don't vote for me. The voting machines are going to vote for me, and we are going to ensure that Mr. Trump does not get in, and we are going to re-implement all these trading policies that David Rockefeller worked so hard for decade after decade after decade. That is all for today.